The third lesson is from the PLO system. We are talking about single flop with initiative. We are talking about single flop with initiative. I mean, we are only talking about flops that you folded pre-flop in the position you are in against when you are out of position. When you check, one of the places you check is when it has a handle. Be sure that your card can be good after the flop that can improve your hand. Say, let's say we got ace five of spades and king of clubs, and you're the last one to make a raise, and it comes up nine of diamonds, nine of spades, and ten of spades. What should you do instead of betting? Check it. Right on. The main reason to check is in turn a spade comes up or something. Yo, if the jack's coming, then y'all better get a move on and take advantage of this opportunity. You could win some serious cash, but watch out because someone else might have a straight flush or some other crazy hand. Or maybe they got nothing and they're just bluffing. And when that jack shows up, Another guy could have a 7-8 combo, or maybe even a pocket pair like Queen-8. You've got the nuts and they're just dragging along with their rags. This is when you gotta put the pressure on, instead of letting them catch up. Cause you want that next card for free, and if it comes up an ace, your hand might just get made. Unless your opponent's playing the river too loose, of course. So when do you have to bet? Again, on the same board, if your hand has no chance to win after it is closed, or when, even if your hand is better than turns. Again, you won't win much. You have six to five spades and four or five diamonds on the turn. Even if the decade comes, it may be a good hand sometimes but the probability is low because now it's the higher flushes that can beat your hand unless the five comes. You have many options to make your own hands, so it is better to bet on water and hope that the opponent will succeed or not. Bring bigger or one-half jack or flash with queen if you can win the pot, but these are the conditions that you should bet immediately after the flop and nine checks, and then people will make this mistake. When the previous hand is sixth, five us, four, five double suited, they either bet on both conditions or they both call, which is totally wrong and will make you lose your money. This is the check and bet range. All right, let's go to some examples. First example. The in the big blind has 8875. You make a standard raise, and the big blind calls. You go to the flop, and the board is jack 5 3, and the big blind checks. Now, what would you do? Pause the video and write your answer, and I'll tell you what's on my mind in this situation. Some players like to check here, but I think it's better to bet. The reason to bet is that you know. You don't have too many overs in case of a scare card, and you may get eight or five and one diamond. But still, even with clay, your hand is not strong enough to want to prefer not to play the flop, and if it calls, you can easily give it a chance in turn. So doing is a better option than checking. Of course, if you have, for example, ten and ten, it will be a little better. There is no problem in checking there. But still, I prefer to check there as well. In the second example, you see the boss with a hand of 6-5-4-3, and the big calls, flop comes king-jack-7, and checks with no money. What is your game? Okay, stop the video again, I'll tell you. Here, you have to do bet 100% of the time, and I think many people see this hand and want to check and see if they get a flush or a 9 and or if they see a card that completes their hand on the river. But this is completely wrong. You ain't gonna be worth jack squat, and you gotta do whatever it takes to get your ass out of there. Plus, one cool thing about this hand is that it could make the damn thing way better a lot of the time. When you get a good hand, 
You gotta work your magic on it. And if someone has a killer hand, you can switch it up and make it even sicker. That you will be able to get it. That force the ace and king or two oices to fold. So bet on the flop. And you can bluff the turn bluff the river as well. But don't check the first one. Checking the movement is wrong. Do not do this. The third example is the same fella, but with ace-queen-10-8. What is this movement of yours? Pause the video again and decide if you want to check or bet. Well, in this situation, it should be. Check this out. You shouldn't call it now, because the... And the reason is that you have a good rap, and if they give you a small check, you have to fold it. Because when they check on the flop in front of you, it means that the opponent has either a king and a jack or a set or a feather with a flash that breaks your hand. It is too far to check with ace and king, which is like you. Yo, even if they got hands like you and they check but don't get a good card in turn, they'll just do it again. You know what to do, man. So I'd rather just check and see what I get and hope the other guy's got a low straight, let it ride or call it off. And if they check on the turn again, maybe, just maybe, you could go for it. But I don't like going for it and getting tiny chips out in front, only to have to fold later. Nah, man. Working's all wrong unless the opponent really sucks big time at playing, which I doubt would happen. It's a totally different story, though, but... Folks around here usually check the details if they know how to play. So, you better check this hand too. Now those pre-